hello welcome to my channel my name's alicia i am not going to keep these on but i am filming this the friday before easter uh on my lunch break um so anyway that's what i look like in the wild as far as a teacher goes but anyway i am going to do a video on kind of like financial tips these ideas come in and out of my head um and then i just kind of i have like a little note app on my phone and i kind of keep track of them um so this one just kind of came to me but anyway, my first piece of financial advice is to use your own judgment if you're kind of wanting to pick a financial plan. Um, some of the plans out there can be very extreme. So um, if you are trying to like do better with your finances and you're kind of like Googling, you know, different systems, I would say look at them and take little nuggets from all of them. Some of them are, in my opinion, a little extreme. Like Dave Ramsey for me, um, I think he has lots and lots of good advice. And of course his plan um, is not necessarily a bad plan, but it's a little extreme for my taste. And he might've even changed it um, over the years. So I would say kind of use your own common sense when you're picking a financial plan, make sure it works for you. And it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. Pick the things you like, don't do the things you don't agree with. Um, number two, get out of debt and stay out of debt. And I'm talking about credit card debt um, or like unnecessary debt. So um, I know I think with the, the guy I just mentioned, I, I'm pretty sure we're, you know, car and all of that is bad. I, I feel like, um, like house, um, I, I'm, I feel like a mortgage is fine. Um, now again, with a mortgage, I wouldn't be taking a home line of credit and all that. But anyway, I feel like um, a home is fine and a car is fine as long as you're not getting extremes of either of those. So I don't feel like, I mean, zero debt for me, I don't know if always be possible. I mean, once we pay off our house, it'll be possible. Um, but I started my marriage with credit card debt and it felt like a burden, like a rock um, or I don't know, just something hanging over our shoulder. Um, and so once we paid that off, we have never had debt on a credit card again. Um, we pay it off every um, month. And I think somewhere on the line, which I'll just add it in here, I think, yeah, my number seven was don't put things on the credit card unless you can pay it off. And my other thing with the credit card, since I'm lumping it in right now, is to make the credit card work for you. So we have a Southwest card. At this point, I feel like we get two to five free flights a year. So I would say make it worth your while. So um, I have a friend um, who I know would use the credit card responsibly, pay it off, but she does not want to put things on the credit card. So, I, and that's kind of like the one of the ways to make it work for you, like for the Southwest card, you know, any big purchase we make, we put it on the credit card so we get points, but of course we're paying it off that month. And so you're making the credit card, you know, work for you. You're getting added benefit for that. All right, let's go back over. Um, so my number three is kind of if needed, but I think it's kind of always a good idea. So back when we were trying to get on our feet out of debt, we made a budget and we just did it in Excel. My husband was good at making an, an Excel. Um, it could literally be on a sheet of paper, but basically we took our total income we wrote, you know, in the spreadsheet, it, you know, electric bill, gas bill, water bill, uh, groceries. I mean, we had categories for everything. I mean, and I would say, I would encourage you guys to have categories, have a Christmas fund, have a vacation fund, um, savings. I mean, we put all kinds of things on there, Netflix, whatever bills you have, put it on there. Um, and that way you can see where your money's going and you're not winging it. Like you don't have to question how much money will I have left over at the end of the month. You will just know. So I feel like a budget, even if you know, you're in the category of you have plenty of money and you don't necessarily need a budget, it's good to see, you know, kind of a lot where your money's going. So you're getting the most out of your money. Um, and going right in with that is pay yourself first. So put money in a savings, put money in a retirement pay yourself first. So before you go and have fun and, and spend your money on shopping or movies, uh, make sure you can pay your bills that month and then put a money away. Um, and I would say every time you get a raise, increase the amount you're putting in to savings um, and kind of rolling in with this. I think number five, I mean, at this point, we're not really counting, but if you can't be trusted, like 
we have a regular savings account that we could easily get out of and that's fine for us we don't usually touch it but if for some reason you're a person who is just not going to stay out of that put it in an, a type of account where it's harder to get out um you always want to have some money available in case something happens but um if you're not responsible put it somewhere so pay yourself first um, and that can be different things. Like if your company has a 401k that they contribute to, you always want to do that one first because that's free money. Uh, sadly, neither one of us uh, have ever had that. Um, but put money in a retirement account, put money in a savings account, pay yourself first. Um, number six, I feel like, you know, car is what it says, but I feel like it's any big purchase. Make sure it's responsible in many levels, research it. Um, does it have good reviews? Is it going to last a long time? Do you really need it? Um, I kind of, I feel like I got, um, stung. I don't know what the saying is with my car. So I might have a Jeep. And if you've been around, you might've seen, heard me complain about my Jeep. Um, I didn't look at reviews. I didn't really look into it. Um, my husband's dad works for Chrysler. He's had Jeeps, although not my kind of Jeep. I just assumed they were good cars. Like I didn't think about it. And then my car has had massive problems. And I totally get that there's probably lots of people with Jeeps that have zero problems. But then I went on Consumer Reports and the Jeep Grand Cherokee just has dreadful reviews. So I feel like we have to make sure, and I will probably never buy a car again without looking at Consumer Reports, other reviews, because I just don't wanna get into this problem where um, you're spending money, having to buy another car, all this stuff. So any big purchase, I would really recommend researching it, making sure it's a good decision. Um, and always like, is it a need or a want? Like um, make sure you're being responsible that way. You know, if you make 30,000, you don't need to be buyer a Ferrari kind of a thing. Make sure the purchases are in line with the money you have you can you know afford them etc um we try to not have car payments or to pay down our car as fast as possible um and i think with cars where were we at i think oh yeah on cars too um so for a long time it was i i felt personally it was a better deal to get a used car they were cheaper by quite a bit because once you drive the car off the lot, it depreciates. Um, and I would often get a used car that was dealer certified. So it came with like a two year, you know, warranty, et cetera. But now, nowadays it's almost cheaper or within a couple thousand to get a brand new car. So I almost ended up getting a new car because my Jeep was just giving me so much trouble. And it was kind of worth my while just to get a brand new car because they were really for the used ones you were not getting that big of a discount so i feel like you really have to check prices also i had noticed that a dealer um kind of north of us was three thousand cheaper than a dealer south of us so really do your research because there's no reason just to give away three thousand um you know extra dollars for no reason um and i would say number eight don't buy things you can't afford now um, I suppose there are situations where it's an extreme thing where you just have to, you know, pay for the doctor bill or whatever. But in general, if it's not like a true emergency, you're not buying it if you can't afford it. Um, and we had to be really strict. There was a part of our marriage where we had to be really strict and, you know, we had to say no, like we couldn't, you know, go out to eat all the time or we couldn't do whatever because we simply didn't have the money. Um, and I also feel like if you're at the store, this is kind of number 11, I'm kind of jumping all over here, but at the store, is it a want, is it a need? Can you wait? Like, do you have to have it? Like, you know, did it break or it's empty or, you know, toilet paper? What category is it? Like if, you know, do you need, is it a need or a want and can you wait? Do you have the money kind of all? All right, sadly, this may be on my need to purchase. This is not that old. I mean, I would say I probably had it for like six months or maybe a little bit more, but the suction cup thing that holds my phone up in my car is not working. Um, so that may be a need to buy. Um, and then I kind of already talked about that, like have different budgets. Like, um, you know, Christmas, we have a Christmas kind of account, 
because we know that every year we're gonna to need to buy Christmas presents. And in that kind of fun, I account for Valentine's Day, birthdays, anniversaries. So we put in X number of amount. And so when it comes to a gift we have to buy, we just, you know, we have the Christmas account and we use it. We have a vacation account. Um, we even kind of have an auxiliary account that goes in for like haircuts, different things like that. Um, so I feel like the more diverse you can be on your budget and different accounts, then you don't have as many um, surprises. And I think a common thing, you know, is an emergency fund. Again, I think some people have an extreme amount, like you need to have like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for an emergency fund. I've never needed to have one um, as far as like that big, but I know some people have, you know, if you have a catastrophic loss of job or whatever, I do think it's important to have a backup. Um, I would say 10,000 or more in a savings. That way you can weather storms. I don't personally know if you need, you know, a $50,000 or whatever, you know, emergency fund. But I think that also depends on, on where you are um, and what other resources you have to draw from if something major were to happen. But anyway, that's just kind of my little tips on financial advice. I hope you guys have a great weekend, or I guess it's not going to be a weekend for you. I don't know when this will come up. It's going to be a weekend ahead of me, but whatever you're watching this, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great week ahead. So I will talk to you later.